Hi guys, welcome back to another video on my channel and again in this episode I'll be working on the Barchetta and in this video I have been doing a little bit of bodywork on it. I'm not going to show you anymore because I'm going to make you watch the video. So uh, hopefully you enjoy this one. It is pretty much just me doing all the bodywork and I will probably do a commentary over it. So uh, enjoy it and I shall speak to you at the end. Just managed to push the biggest dent out off camera. Um, so we'll see if we can just get this last one out here and then um, that's the worst of it done. It's not bad for a five minute bit of work. Certainly fits in a lot better than it came out. It's not bad actually. We've got the line back here. I wonder whether this has come back in as well. So we need to pop a front bumper in and see if that lines up as well. So with a nice line of filler and that pushed in right, it should uh, look okay that, I'm quite impressed with that. I was imagining the worst case scenario of needing to uh, weld the piece in, but because you're going to get pretty good access to the panel to get the dents out, um, it's come out pretty good. I might just work on these couple of dents a little bit so we need even less filler in there, but uh, yeah, pleased with that. What I've done here is I have plastic welded this crack in the bumper, also reinforced it from behind. So now what I need to do is just smooth this out and um, then we can put some filler on it and have it looking like new. So I've now just put a coat of uh, very fine filler on there. Uh, I've also put some um, fiberglass behind here and put some filler on there as well. And again, the crack that was here that I showed you in the last episode, I have filled that as well. Also put the filler on the bonnet, the front panel, and on the side of the panel there. Unfortunately, typically me, it wasn't looking where I was going and walked into the filler there where it was wet. So it's not the best uh, application, unfortunately. So I'll sand it. This is probably going to need several coats anyway. So uh, it will get uh, sanded down once that's dried. And hopefully after a... A couple of uh, filler passes it uh, should be ready for some primer right being busy sanding it down I've now put the second layer on the bonnet I've decided to do a whole layer across the front where all the dents were uh, because I was finding it quite ripply and I wasn't really getting there with the filler so then I'm going to use the uh, long block to uh, sand it down by hand and not use my sander um, the same on this side the dents are quite smooth now on that. I've just put the second layer on there just because there was a couple of little ripples in there that I wasn't quite happy with. And then I'm going to sand it down with my floppy uh, long block so I should be able to get the curve in there quite right without going too deep with the uh, air sander.
All perfectly smooth now, apart from a high spot here. As you can see where it's gone through to the metal. You can just feel a little bit of a high spot there. So I'm just gonna tap that high spot down, another layer of filler, sand it down, and we should be done with the bonnet. The final result of the filler work. Bonnet is nice and smooth. It's just got a very light coat of wet acid etch on there. And there is some dust in it as well. So we are going to be uh, sanding that back again before we primer it properly. So yeah, I am very, very happy with that. Very happy that there's no rust underneath the scuttle panel. All nice and clear. Right, we're almost ready to lap some primer on it. I have wet the floor down to eliminate a lot of the dust. It's all masked up. I need to put a little bit of acid etch primer in a few spots. I've also had to sand inside here because there was a little bit of rust on top of the wing and a few little bits starting down there. So I'm gonna put some acid etch primer down there as well. Uh, tack it all off first and then uh, throw some primer on it. So guys, we're at the point now where we can nearly throw some colour on. What I'm doing now is I'm just going to put some acid etch over the front of the car where there's a few little bits of metal showing from where I had to sand it. Um, and then the yellow stuff I'm putting on, it's sort of uh, a water-based sealer so the paint doesn't react to the acid etch primer that I've put on the front of the car. And it's really good stuff because it has uh, got me out of some problems when I've uh, been suffering with reactions happening. And um, it is great stuff. And now we're just throwing some primer over the top of it. Primer actually went on quite nicely. It was quite smooth as well, so it didn't take too long to flat it all down. Now I'm just putting a, a, light, a light coat of just black spray paint on it so I can rub it all down and get rid of any lumps and bumps. Or any uh, little... Uh, markings that are within the primer i did find some sort of air, really small pinholes and that's what i'm doing here now is just blocking off the pinholes with some really fine filler and then uh, i just rub that down afterwards uh, another quick coat of primer and uh, it was ready for paint so now just tacking it all down to get rid of all the dust First, lots of colour is now going on. Uh, I think I did three coats in total, and then two coats of lacquer. But as I said in one of my uh, comments on YouTube last weekend, I decided I wasn't quite happy with it. There were some sanding marks in the paint, and they weren't just disappearing because it's silver and it shows everything. So I, I decided to flat it all down again and give it another coat of paint, and then uh, two more coats of lacquer. Uh, and now it's much better shape. I'm uh, a lot more pleased with it. Now we're just putting on the last few coats of lacquer and then uh, leave it to dry for the weekend. It is now the morning after I have painted the barchetta. So let's go in and have a look at what it's like. So there we go, a few bits of dust have dropped in it overnight, but nothing major. Fortunately that room's still there, that I need to get rid of in a couple of days. 
few more bits of dust here and here but they will disappear without noticing them at one single bit so right let's get it unmasked and out the booth into the sun Right, let's compare the paint colour now. Now considering that hasn't been polished in 10 years, that's a little bit duller, but once we polish that up, that should be a pretty smart on colour match. Right, we're now outside. What do you think of the colour match on that? I don't think I'm gonna do any better than that, really, especially once the rest of the uh, dull bodywork gets polished up. And here's the bonnet, dents be gone. That's a pretty good finish on that. There's uh, very little dust got into that. There's a little bit of dust dropped in that there. There's a little bit there, a little chunk there, but nothing major at all. So again, really pleased with that. So now I'm going to crack on with the cam belt. I shall leave you to enjoy the rest of the video in peace and I'll uh, speak to you in the next one. Right guys, just here doing a service on the car now. I have taken the sump plug out, removed most of the oil, just letting the rest of that drip out now. Surprisingly enough, the sump plug wasn't seized and a nifty little thing I have found, I spent about 30 seconds wondering, on, oh, how do you get the air filter out? And Italian engineering, when it works, it works really well. All you need to do, is undo this, bottom comes off, out comes the air filter. How easy is that? The air filter's not in bad, too bad of a shape, but uh, it definitely needs changing. So brand new air filter is gonna go in now. I have lubricated that screw, so uh, it doesn't cause any problems for anybody else later on in its life. There we go, ever so slightly overfilled, but by the time that circulates back around the engine, there will be uh, just enough oil in that. Now, let's see how easy it is to get this uh, old, decrepit, rusty oil filter off. But it's gonna just disintegrate when I try and get it undone. The oil was definitely due to be changed as well. But the oil wasn't in too bad of shape to be honest. Genuine oil filter going on its place and I have topped it up with some oil that's why it's leaking out. Handy tip is when you're ever doing an oil filter, always get a bit of rag and do it tight with a rag um, rather than just hand tight because you can get a slightly better grip on it. Well, that's the oil and filter change done and the air filter done. That was relatively simple. We've got a loose 
manifold heat shield here, but we can sort that out. It's just some bigger washes needed. So let's uh, get cracking on the cam belt now. Now I'm just going to crack on with the cam belt change now. Not really going to film it or give you a guide to it, just purely for the fact that I've done a twin spark guide already and it is pretty much the same engine. So uh, let's get going. center now and lock the cams off. Spark plugs are not in too bad a condition. And you can tell this engine has had a pretty good life. It's not had any issues with oil changes. They've always been regular by the look of it. And you ask how we're going to tell that, and that's purely for the fact there's not a massive build of carbon with inside the engine itself. But it's still fairly clean. See now this cam is out ever such a little bit but we'll sort that out once we put the new belt on so the cam belt's all off now i've removed the tensioners i do still need to remove the water pump i now need to remove this tensioner so i can remove this camshaft so i can do the cam variator We need to remove the remaining four lobes and cam lock, and there's also four nuts along here. Well, I was going to film the variator removal, but I didn't press record. So, uh, what I've done is I've wrapped the camshaft in some clean rag. Um, placed it in between my vice, tightened the vice up, not overly tightened it, um, and then got a big bar with my adapter to remove the variator, and um, then just twist it off. There we go, exhaust cam is now back in time. Just gotta wait for this variator to arrive for tomorrow. I need to torque up all the bolts I've done already uh, and then uh, crack on with uh, finishing the cam belt change off. So see you tomorrow, but tomorrow is right now for you. New variator has just turned up. And would you believe 236 pounds and 39 pence. This time last year, they were around £115. So God knows what's going on with the prices at the minute. So that's one expensive, very small part. So I'm just waiting for some new spark plugs to arrive now and some thread lock and one other thing, but I forgot what it was, the um, rocker seal. Uh, but I'm hopefully gonna be able to crack on with it now and uh, get the car back together. Just popped a little bit of thread lock on the inside of the shaft just to uh, keep it locked on there and now we just need to tighten it up and that just gets reinstalled now
Okay, there we go. Engine is now in time. Let's just button everything back up, torque everything back up, put it all back together, and we can give it a good start. Everything's all done now, we're ready to start it. I've put uh, brand new coolant in it. I have put a brand new rocket cover gasket on there. Uh, I've also fitted four new spark plugs as well. So we should be good to go. Everything is uh, all torqued up. Battery's fully charged, so uh, let's see if we can get it to start. Now you've got some dry valves in there at the moment, probably just because it's not been running so long so it will sound tappity at the moment but as you can hear that variator soon quietened down, now it's got some oil in it so we just need to let that run up to temperature now and uh, make sure that's all okay. Right, it's had a few minutes to warm up now, it's quietened down quite a bit, there is still a little bit of a tick coming from it but that will just be a, a stubborn hydraulic lift done and with a, a little bit of use and a little bit of revving it should uh, start to lubricate up and quieten down that bit more Just made a quick little patch panel, matches pretty well, uh, put the bend in it to match the floor pan. So now we just need to tack it into place. I've also removed the seat and all the trim from inside so it's all nice and clean. And now uh, let's just tack it into place. So there we go, end of another busy day working on the car. Um, quite a bit achieved over this past two weeks, don't you think? With the front end being repainted and literally all the mechanics done to it. Um, that bit of little spot of welding's been done as well. I will just want to um, give it a coat of stone chip once it's fully dried overnight. I have applied some um, seam sealer to it, so that will uh, hopefully never rust there again. Uh, what's left to do? Well, I can't really do any more on it now until the headlights come. Um, I have been told they are on the way, but they are coming from Greece, so they uh, will take probably a week or so to get here. Probably a bit longer with uh, all the delays of what's going on at the minute. Um, I've got to flat the bonnet and polish the bonnet, and I just need to polish um, the front bit of the tub as well. Um, but I have already flatted that down and given it a quick going over with uh, the polish. But yeah, the bonnet definitely needs uh, flattening and polishing. Um, so mechanics all done, it's pretty much ready for an MOT, um, once we get some headlights of course. So yeah, um, in the next episode it's going to be see how much we can tart the body up, seeing if uh, we can get away with it painting the rest of it. So yeah, um, hopefully you've liked this one, um, please comment below if you've got any questions on it on, um, or if you want any work doing yourself uh, on your cars just uh, send me an email and I can get you a quote for the work you want doing to it. But other than that, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.